Types and shadows of the Holy Spirit and Bride of Christ in the Old Testament. This is part six and the final part in this series. In this series of sermons, we have examined pictures of the Holy Spirit and Bride of Christ in Old Testament stories. And through each Old Testament character, we see that the Bride of Christ possesses many of the same qualities and characteristics which make her very special to heaven. Like Esther, the Bride of Christ is spiritually pure. She's uncontaminated by the sins of the world, Therefore, she is the chosen one of King Jesus, receiving great favor and abundant blessings, being made a joint heir with him in his kingdom. And like Ruth, with a willing heart, she is led by the Holy Spirit, leaving her former life behind. And now she continually labors in the harvest fields of her Lord, reaping multitudes of souls with the help and protection of his ministering spirits. The Bride of Christ's light is shining bright in this dark world of sin, as in Gideon's day, because her vessel is filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit, ready to be broken and remade again and again in the potter's hand for whatever purpose he desires. And in 100% obedience and humility, like Gideon, the bride is being guided and directed by the Holy Spirit that lives within to perform the whole will of God. And as Eliezer led Rebekah on a journey to meet her groom Isaac, so too the Holy Spirit is leading bridal company members through this journey of life safely, all the way to rapture ground to meet her groom, Jesus. And as they travel, Together, the Holy Spirit is teaching the bride more and more about the groom, seeking to make Jesus, whom she has never met, living reality. So when the day arrives and he presents her to the groom, they will not be strangers. Now, we have also learned this journey to heaven is not an easy one for the bride of Christ. In fact, Jesus gives different warnings in the Word. John 16, 33 these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 15, verses 19 and 20. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I have said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And finally, in Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 36, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am, I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Because of all these warnings and more which I did not present to you, Jesus promised later in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, with this said, I want to take you back to the Old Testament, to the book of Daniel, to see a picture of all of Christ's warnings and of the great promise he gave to never leave us. In the third chapter of Daniel, we see the bride of Christ in the form of three Hebrew boys. In that day, the king made an image of gold and required everyone in his kingdom to bow and worship the image. However, the three Hebrew boys refused to bow. Just as the bride of Christ today is standing tall against Satan, his kingdom, and all of its ungodliness and sin. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now think a moment of the strength and determination 
these three Hebrew boys possessed, refusing to obey the king's command when everyone else complied, then having to answer to the king in front of soldiers, princes, and subjects, all the while knowing that the king had power to put them to death. At first, the king tried his best to persuade the Hebrew boys, even offering to play them a special song just for them if they would just bow to his image. The king tried to tempt them, to seduce them, to stroke their ego, anything to get them to bow. But the three Hebrew boys would not yield because there was no ego in them to entice. Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The Hebrew boys knew the fiery furnace awaited them if they would not bow. What holy boldness they possessed. It's the same holy boldness that the early church prayed for and received under the threat of great persecution. In this final hour, the devil will do his best to get bridal company members to compromise truth and their walk with God. He will even offer you special enticements to try and persuade you to bow and compromise. But you must never bow in compromise, not to family and friends, not to the devil, and not to even self. Like the three Hebrew boys, the bride of Christ has died to self. The devil finds no ego in her that he can entice, for she is emptied of self and is full of divine love and divine faith. She is seeking to lose her life in this world that she might gain eternal life in the next. And remember this, when you take your stand for God, that may not be the end of the trial of your faith. No, for the deeper you go with God, the more of yourself you give to him, the stronger you grow spiritually, which means the greater the trials and the more devils you will fight. It's spelled out here in Daniel chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the fiery, burning, fiery furnace. Taking their stand only made the king furious. And he proceeded to try and des destroy the Hebrew boys. So the furnace blasted away, being heated seven times hotter than it was ever heated before. So hot that when the mightiest men of his army were ordered to throw the boys into the furnace, they were killed in doing so. Today, the bride of Christ is full of first love for her groom, and that leaves no fear, no room for fear in her life. No fiery flame of persecution is able to purge from her heart first love. Like the king, Satan will make the trials the hottest he can produce, but to no avail, for the bride of Christ will never bow, therefore she will never burn. And if you are determined to never bow to anyone but the Lord, Jesus promised to be there for you, and you will never be destroyed. Daniel chapter 3 Verses 23 through 25. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, 
Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. When the Hebrew boys were thrown into the flame, the only thing that was destroyed were the ties that bound them. And when so many people in the Christian world, they wonder why a God of great love would allow his children to face fiery furnaces of trials, temptations, and persecutions. Many times the reason being is because when that child of God faces that fiery furnace, there are things in their life that become manifest that never would have become manifest had they not faced that trial. Spiritual bondages, spiritual weaknesses that would have never come forth any other way except facing that fiery flame. But if that child of God will face that fiery furnace, waiting patiently upon the Lord until Jesus appears in that flame, and when he is able to lead them out victoriously, not only will they come out with all spiritual bondages broken, but they will come out with faith that is stronger, love that is stronger, patience that is greater. This is why many times God allows his children to face the fiery tribulations and persecutions of life. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, Paul addresses this. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Notice the progression in the scripture. Tribulation worketh patience, patience experience, and experience hope. When you face the fiery trials and tribulations, when you face your fiery furnace in life, and you seek God in that flame, and you patiently wait until the fourth man appears in that flame, patience will be developed within you. And when Christ leads you victoriously out of that furnace, you have a blessed, invaluable experience that in future days you can lean and depend on, knowing that what God has done for me in the past, he will do again. And that will give you divine hope. Divine hope for the next time you face a fiery trial, tribulation, or persecution. Verse 5, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given us. Jesus is with the bride today in all of her fiery furnaces of life. And we are promised in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. So in your fiery furnace of life, wait upon the Lord patiently. Do not move. Do not seek your own way out until the fourth man appears. And when he does, he will lead you out victoriously. Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. 
and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Think of it. The ruler of the known world of that day was shaken to the core and forced to proclaim the God of the Hebrew boys throughout his kingdom. God used this experience that the three Hebrew boys went through as a means to proclaim his glory to a world that was full of heathen idol gods. Think on it a moment. In that day, there was no technology of radios, telephones, TVs, internet. So the surest, quickest way to deliver a message to the known world of that day would be a proclamation by the king, the ruler himself of, in the world, the most powerful man of that day, testifying to the true and living God. And that message, with the Hebrew boy's testimony, reached all over the known world. When the bride of Christ comes forth out of her fiery furnace of trials, God will work it for good. She will become stronger. Souls will be won and God will get all the glory. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And thank God one day we will face our final fiery furnace. Then the Holy Spirit will open the furnace door and cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh and every bridal company member will be lifted out of this world. And that means no more trials and temptations, no more heavy burdens, no more weeping, for the long night has ended. Psalm 30, verse 5, the B part, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. In this final hour, the bride of Christ will undergo all kinds of tests. Some that have been dearest to her that she loved the most will turn on her and her relationship with King Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 and 22, And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now I finally take you to the sixth chapter of Daniel. In this chapter, we find that all of the king's court, every president, prince, and counselor has turned against Daniel the prophet in jealousy because Daniel has been highly favored and blessed to the king. Daniel chapter 6, beginning in verse 3, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find an occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Take note how the devil works through people. People will be jealous of the great favor that the bridal company members receive from King Jesus. Therefore, they will seek to find fault with her. And when they find no fault with her, they will seek to use her relationship with the Lord against her. Friends and family may accuse, you go to church too much. You pray and read your Bible all the time. You volunteer and do too much work for your church. You fast too much. You need to spend more time with your family, more time doing for yourself. But the bride will pay no heed to such accusations. Daniel chapter 6, verse 7. All the presidents of the kingdom 
the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or any man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. These enemies of Daniel knew he was faithful to his God in prayer. So they devised a plan to use this faithfulness against Daniel. Now the king loved Daniel. However, he was ignorant to his court's intentions against Daniel. So the king was misled and signed this decree into law. And once made into law, it could not be undone. So when Daniel heard of it, the first thing he did was pray. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Like Daniel, members of the bride of Christ treasure their relationship with the Lord. They treasure that privilege of prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Like Daniel, the bride of Christ prays, fasts, and studies God's word. Because of it, she receives divine wisdom, knowledge, and discernment from on high. You know what tells us in the ninth chapter of Daniel? The angel Gabriel appeared unto him, declaring that he was greatly loved of God. And Daniel wrote in his book great revelations that he received because of his devotion to the Lord in prayer. Revelations of the great kingdoms throughout history. Revelations of Christ's kingdom in the end. Revelations of this end time hour. The Antichrist and the great white throne judgment. You see, nothing could stop Daniel from seeking God. And nothing will stop the bride of Christ from seeking God. When Daniel would get down to pray, the Bible says he would open up his window towards Jerusalem to pray and seek God. And the bride will pray seeking God with her heart fixed towards the new Jerusalem, the promised home that God has provided. Daniel was unjustly thrown into the den of lions, and the bride can expect the same. For the Bible warns of our day and the lack of truth and justice. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 14 and 15. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. The bride of Christ lives in a dark world of sin. The devil and his demons go about as roaring lions, seeking whom they may devour. And the bride will face the lion's den over and over because of her stand for truth. However, as in Lot's day, as in Gideon's day, we see the Holy Spirit in the form of a delivering angel. Daniel chapter 6, beginning in verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. 
the angel held the lion's mouth shut all night long. Daniel, knowing the power of his God, as he did, still had to be amazed at the signs, the wonders of his God. And the bride of Christ will never be complacent with the miracle hand of her God. She will never tire of witnessing his miracles. She will never cease to be amazed at his signs, wonders, and manifestations. Now, at this point, I want to take a moment to highlight certain characteristics of the bride of Christ that are very important in her life. Through this six-part series, we have learned how bridal company members will live their lives by studying these types and shadows in the Old Testament. For example, God chose Gideon and his 300 men out of 32,000 men to bring deliverance to Israel. And these chosen of God, all of them, every one of them, was skilled in using a trumpet. And the bride of Christ will be skilled in using the gospel trumpet, sounding it throughout the world. Queen Esther practiced Bible fasting to enable her to do the will of God and intercede for her people before the king. And the bride of Christ will practice Bible fasting to be anointed to do the will of God and to win the lost at any cost. And of course, Daniel was a prayer warrior, never compromising his privilege of prayer, even if it meant death. And the bride of Christ will not compromise her privilege of prayer in this busy, restless society. She will not compromise her prayer time. Not for family and friends. Not for pleasures and entertainments. Not for anyone or anything. Because she has great reality in prayer. She knows the power of prayer. You see, by three different types of the bride of Christ, I have brought before you three steps. Prayer, fasting, living in the Word. These three steps will take a person into greater reality and more power with God. These three steps will help bring you into the status of being a bridal company member. Prayer, fasting, and living in the Word are to be practiced throughout your journey to rapture ground. Now back to the book of Daniel. Here we see a picture of a faithful, trusting bride waiting for her deliverance through a long night in the den of lions of this world, waiting for her groom to come. She is uncompromising. She is full of knowledge and prophecies, and she is watching and praying, knowing without a doubt that King Jesus will soon come to deliver her. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In this world, the bride of Christ is surrounded by the devil's lions, hungry, vicious demons desiring to destroy her. Yet by the power of the Holy Spirit working within her, all devils are rendered powerless, helpless to do anything but look at the bride. For the Holy Spirit has shut their mouths. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Unlike the king in Daniel's day, that was so worried about Daniel's safety. King Jesus has no doubts and no worries for his bride because that responsibility of safety and protection lies in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Daniel chapter 6, verse 23 and 24, Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den so Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. The bride of Christ will harbor no hate, no ill will for her enemies and persecutors. In divine love, she simply turns them all over to God. 
the righteous judge. Romans chapter 12, verse 19, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And in the near future, the door of the lion's den of this world will open. The voice of King Jesus will command, Come up higher. Come up out of this world, O bride of mine. And those that remain in this world, the sinful and unrighteous, those that hated and fought truth, those with a heart of hypocrisy that have persecuted the bride will meet God's judgment, poured out without mercy during the seven-year tribulation period. And as it was for Daniel's enemies that were destroyed by the lions in that den, God will unleash powerful, vicious devils upon this world, devils that have been bound under the earth for thousands of years, and they will bring pain, death, and destruction upon all humanity. Revelation chapter 9, verses 15 through 17. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Friend watching by way of television, listening by way of radio, you do not want to face God's judgment during this seven-year period. And God does not want you to face it either. That is why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into this world. He died and spilled divine blood that you could live forever in heaven. When Jesus was here, he spoke of signs to look for in this world just before he would come for his bride. Signs found in Matthew 24. Signs that are appearing everywhere today in society. Thank God we have been provided a way of escape, an opportunity to be bridal company members. And this opportunity only comes by divine blood and the person of the Holy Ghost. And you watching by way of television, listening by way of radio, if there is any sin in your life, anything that God is displeased with, right now is your opportunity to be set free, to start you on your way to becoming a bridal company member. Say this prayer with me right now. Say, oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. I'm so sorry, Lord, for failing you, but I have come home, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there's power in the blood of Jesus that washes away all of my sins. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. And friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus is yours. Your sins are gone. Eternal life is yours through the blood. And when Jesus spilled that blood at Calvary, it was a twofold atonement, forgiveness of your sins and healing and deliverance for your body. And you who are sick and afflicted, watching by way of television, put your hand against mine on the screen as a form of laying on of hands. And you listening by way of radio, place your hand on your listening device. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring those who are sick and afflicted, those with a death disease working in their body. God, lay a healing hand upon each one. Show forth your glory this night. In the blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let your blood power flow to each one. Break every bondage, lift every burden for your honor and glory, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and amen. Friend, watch every improvement. Give God the honor and glory and write and let us know what God has done for you. And friend, get ready to receive the Holy Ghost. If you're listening tonight and you don't have him, you'll never make rapture ground without him. 
You cannot become a member of the bride of Christ without the Holy Ghost. He is your guide, your teacher, your director. He is the one with his power that will change you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Get ready to receive the Holy Ghost as I call this anointing upon you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the people before you now. God, I call your mighty anointing upon them. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And friend, get off to yourself and praise the Lord. Praise him with that word glory. Magnify God in your heart until the Holy Ghost comes in, takes you over and speaks in another language, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. God bless you tonight.